Welcome to Comically Inclined! I am Danny Stewart, the Nerd King, your host for this podcast. <coughs> Johnson! I mean, I'm Blake Hickman, the and to, director. He, you sure are, and damn do you look good. And today we have our guest from Saturday Night Nerds, Mr. Cameron Rhodes. Cameron, how you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing I'm, I'm doing okay, really. Especially after, like, no, no, I'm good. No, thanks, thanks for having me, for sure. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. Uh, Saturday Night Nerds is one of our favorite shows, and, uh, you know, we both guested on it. Blake was on last Saturday. Um, you guys are fun. You're engaging. Um, I guarantee that anyone who's a fan of this should check you guys out because they're going to enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so what is your, like, favorite nerd thing? Uh, prob- it's a mix of things. Uh, probably... Probably more than anything, DC, because that's probably what I grew up on. Like, uh, you had Batman and like even stuff like Green Lantern. And I'm finding out I'm I read more DC than I do Marvel. Weirdly, even though I the Marvel does better, like in just about everything, like film and and, and film and t- television series and all that. And also, I'm like a huge gamer too. Like I've played games since I was a kid. Like everything from like. Nintendo 64 to GameCube, Wii, and now I've got like a PlayStation 5 with like too many games for like any one person to play in a lifetime. Yeah. Do you, do you, you got PS5? Yes, sir. I got uh, one. Uh, you, man, you must be incredibly wealthy. That is the mark of the incredibly wish, wealthy. No, <laughs> or like, like, it took me like a year and a half to be able to get one. Like, And when I got me it, too. it was like a millisecond away from it being sold out before I could buy it. Like, Thank God Almighty! First thing I did after that was just like get as get what games I I did for the that were already out for uh, like Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and a few others. Fan effing tastic! Well, we should have our fact checker and human relations specialist extraordinaire Ben Stewart in the comments eventually, uh, and Katrina Stewart, our uh, head of uh, the our art director. Or comically inclined is in the comments now. She also happens to be my better half. Uh, my better, better half. Blake's my other better half. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's weird. We've got this like thruple thing going on. It, it works though. It, it works. Does. It really, it really works. As long as it um, works. Yeah. If you're, if you're running businesses and everybody's uh, having a good time, uh, it's, it's working out, you know? Um, and family dinners are the best. That's like, true. You got to eat family style, Blake. You'll learn. It's a Bavarian thing, really. Don't you have some German roots? Uh, actually, I do. It's very slight, like 1%. There you go. Germans created family-style dining. Yeah, and uh, and 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 uh, steamy showers. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> um, that's not news, but what, what is news is what Blake's about to give us. Blake? Let's fire up the rumor mill. All right, this week on Rumor Mill, right off the bat, we got some Deadpool 3 news. We're getting our favorite taxi cab driver back. He's confirmed he is returning. Uh, really, I don't feel like Deadpool movie would be a regular Deadpool movie without a uh, dope enter. I think, uh-huh. I think seriously, like that man has set such a bar that we expect to see his face every time we see Ryan Reynolds. Their, 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 their chemistry in the comedy back and forth is just phenomenal and great. Like, I, I love it. So, I'm, I'm so excited that they're bringing him back, even though that, you know, there's not a whole lot of change, but we are, you know, in the MCU now, you know, so we are getting some slight change from what Fox has had this whole time. So, yeah, I'm glad to see them continue him. Cameron? Uh, well, what do I think about that? Or yeah. whatever? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I've... Yeah, I you don't have to introduce any news. Blake takes care of that part. You just... You just talk just about show, the news show your tidbits toward it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My tidbits. No, if you uh, new news on top of Blake's rumor mill, I don't know how he would handle that. Well, uh, <laughs> well if anything, Blake already knows about this, uh, if, uh, if he's just waiting for after that. But they're also bringing back Leslie Ugams, who plays Blind Owl for Deadpool 3 as well. They both are really funny characters, and between them and Ryan Reynolds definitely helps. Uh, like, just like because. It's Brian fucking Reynolds, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, D- uh, Dopinder was a major part of uh, Deadpool 1 and 2, uh, especially yeah. 2. Um, While well, he was fun in the first one, when he actually joins X-Force in the second one, uh, that's, that's <laughs> reluctantly, funny. Reluctantly, he didn't make a pass on after Peter. 
You know, what I hope to see in Deadpool three is Hydra Bob again. Hydra Bob. Hydra Bob. He was in the first Deadpool. He's he's basically Deadpool's sidekick from the comics. So in the oh. comics, there's a Hydra agent who is defected from Hydra, and he just hangs out with Deadpool all the time. Right. Yeah. And they even made a reference in the first. Yeah. One as one so of the he, working for Francis, like Bob. Yeah. They. Yeah. Just like how are the kids uh. beating them into the ground? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like Bob, and he's like Wade, and he's like Jacksonville, the TG on Fridays. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so all, all, all the black ops go down in Jacksonville. So I know we haven't gotten the we haven't gotten Hydra in um, the MCU yet, other than well, yeah, yeah, we've gotten Hydra anyway. Yeah, yeah, Hydra. So, so there's really no reason why we couldn't bring Bob in. For some reason, I was thinking um, uh, Aim. But I think we've seen AIM as well now, right? Yeah, we've had AIM too. Because yeah, they were in uh, Miss Marvel. Uh, also, AIM was in uh, Iron Man 3. Yeah. You're, yes. Yeah, um, so, Ben, I apologize that we didn't text you when we went live. Uh, we will uh, further more and into uh, forever. Um, <laughs> welcome to the chat. I was going to uh, say it was on perpetuity, and I forgot the word. <laughs> Uh, number two on the list, we got Demetrius uh, Grasse has been cast as the Grim Reaper in the Wonder Man that we're going to get, in which we got a little tease from Wonder Man, or from the Grim Reaper and WandaVision on one of the intros where we see the Grim Reaper helmet as it's actually coming down, uh, you know, the little cartoon house. We actually see it like in between the two levels. So that was actually a little Grim Reaper Easter egg that we got. Uh, but yeah, that's who's going to be playing Grim Reaper in the Wonder Man series we're going to get. Uh, All right. Wow. Very cool. And uh, if for anyone who doesn't know about the uh, Wonder Man and Grim Reaper, they're brothers. That's what I thought. Yeah, they're brothers before like he becomes Wonder Man, and so it'll be interesting to see because that dynamic because Wonder Man's always been like he's always been tiptoeing the line between hero and villain at times. So it'll mm -hmm. be interesting for them to either work together or fight against each other, and just yeah. And plus. I, I had a chance to see Yahya uh, Abdul Mateen the third. Absolutely. Yeah, and then Wonder Man or Grim Reaper too was a, a pretty big villain in like the comics for Vision, correct? Because I mean he's mm -hmm. the one that went after the, their kids, I think, in the in the comic line. So you're gonna see a lot of overlap between Wonder Man and Vision because when Wonder Man died, they put his consciousness into the original Human Torch uh, android, and that's how Vision was created. Mm -hmm. So Wonder Man and Vision are technically the same character, but not. Um, so yeah, you see a lot of overlap in the comics between the two of them. So uh, we, so we might possibly see White Vision in Wonder Man series. That's what I'm wondering, because you know, in the in the Avengers comics, it was Wonder Man first, then Vision. But in the MCU, we got Vision first, and then Wonder Man. And the Marvel Cinematic Universe does a great job of when they mess something up like that, flipping the script and then making it make sense. So, yeah. right, is Wonder Man's power going to be something that comes from the destruction of Vision, leading to him becoming mm. Wonder? Man? Possibly, and we haven't really we haven't seen one with white vision since wandavision and the only real thing we know about him possibly is like being in armor wars right in the in vision quest it, right vision quest too yeah but can we just say albino vision or like is there can we just or just vision maybe or do, um, is it like do we always have to say white vision i'm just wondering like i, I, I want to make sure he's, he's, not he's, he's upsetting like, anyone he's like pure white i mean what like, if we said cracker vision do you think people would know what we meant not unless I, you could, like, I think that I think that's the one that you would probably have to worry about <laughs> for, for sure. I got you I'm, crack I'm, a could, vision. I apologize. You could take a bite out of vision and just uh, put some butter on them. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. So, uh, biscuit vision and uh, a nice crisp. Uh, Blake, what, what yeah, was the next? Yeah, let's, go, let's, let's go on to the next one. Uh, number three. <laughs> Netflix is uh, Lee Sung Jin replaces Eric per Pearson. As a Thunderbolt writer, and now is rewriting scripts for the Thunderbolts. Oh, yep. uh, you know, you you see rewrites for stuff like this, and you automatically assume it means bad. It's going to be a bad thing. But then look at Ant Man One. You know, Edgar Wright wrote an entire script and made most of the movie, and then it got completely re rewritten and redirected, and got we got what is one of the best uh, 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 superhero movies of that 
um, that, that phase. So, yeah. And let's be honest. I mean, this Al had also, you know, go through Kevin Feige on top of that. So obviously mm -hmm. there was something in that first script that he was just not feeling or feeling, you know, like it was going to be good for the continu uh, for continuation of all these stories. So, uh, I mean, and this guy just seems super pumped. I mean, which who wouldn't be if you're going to get the right at the Marvel <laughs> MCU movie, but right. uh, super pumped. And he, he said he loves these characters and he said it's going to be great, which we shall see. But uh, definitely. Yeah. And, and plus, it, it helps that Thunderbolts hasn't even they haven't even started filming yet, so they've still got right. Thank God. Have, <laughs> yeah, so they have time to like uh, uh, to get everything down, like and, uh, down packed until they start filming. And right. And they have to they have to deal with being under the auspice of making this Harrison Ford worthy now, whereas that was not sure. a problem prior. But they are really close to start filming, I believe. So like they, they I, th I think they're supposed to start filming in June. So like he ain't got a whole lot of time to write rewrite some stuff and get this approved. True, so it doesn't it, push anything uh, back too far. Right, because it's supposed to come out in late twenty twenty four, and yep. so yeah. Mm -hmm. And plus, Harrison Ford's already filming for uh, New World Order. So oh, that's right, that's right. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people are upset about the whole recast of that, but. I think they, I think they picked a good person to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. if, especially if that character is going to have this much more, you know, continuation in these MCU stories, he, he's got to be recast. I mean, uh, so I, I haven't know. seen a lot of people upset about it. What are you, what are you seeing? The um... yeah, when it first got announced, there was people upset about it because they're was... saying how it's not fair. Black Panther we couldn't get recast, but y'all didn't think twice about recast. You know, uh, right? Daddy but Ross. but you know. Um... Uh, uh, the the actor uh, Chadwick Boseman was young, right. and uh, uh, William Hurt was not. Well, like, I think that really gives a a heart attack of old age. You know, that's, that's sad, but its natural causes like right. it's okay to recast the character dying of what was it colon yeah. cancer? Colon yeah. cancer, yeah. Yeah. At, at in in your thirties, like yeah. that's tragic. You can't 40. just replace that character. Was he in his forties? Well, I, I, I feel like I feel like any death's gonna be tragic to the family. But I mean, right. I, but I think every death is inherently <laughs> yeah, yeah. tragic. But I'm it's saying the circumstances change the like. You know, you can't just be like, well, Chadwick Boseman died unexpectedly, and we're gonna replace him, and then William Hurt you know, an, an older gentleman who's had a litany of movies and history and time and, and been around and his family around him, all of that kind of stuff and, and lived right. a good life. You can't be like, Oh, those two things are the exact same and you have to treat it. The situation, the exact, the same. And you well, did it for the black guy, but you can't do it for the white guy. Like that, that's the <laughs> outrage, yeah. right? But it is 2023. So it don't surprise me. Yes, it is. And <laughs> you have a point, like the circumstances, the situations aren't the same, but still it's, a, it's, not going to be easy no matter what and plus yeah. like the chadwick boseman he was a vital point and not only yeah. because he was lead but also he helped he's probably one of like producers and worked closely with ryan and the rest of the cast so well he, he made he made t'challa i mean honestly right. he, he he made that character and, and i think <laughs> i think respectfully so is the right decision not to recast him at all Agreed. I mean, it's it's up to not only just like the studio and the director, but just uh, everyone around them to feel like, should we recast this person or not? It just right. really does depend. Yeah. yeah, and and I agree with Ben. Uh, it's I think it is more about the size of the role. You know, um, yeah. Thunderbolt Ross not a main character in the MCU. Um, I think when it comes down to it, as probably the gist of it, right there is the size of the role. Yeah, we're probably not going to get a Thunderbolt Ross solo film. <laughs> <laughs> not unless, not unless either him or Betty turns into a Red Hulk. Yeah, I think it's coming. I think we're getting Red Hulk in Thunderbolts. I hope we do. I, I'm oh, they, either, that, Thunderbolts either, World Order. That, either that or Abomination just magically drops out, uh, drops in somehow, and just be like, "Hey, kind of mind if I join?" Yeah, I mean it's possible. I mean, I, you never know. I mean, honestly, we do. We did get Tim Roth to resurface. He's definitely still kicking around. And then what about the rumor? Uh, actually, I'll wait for Blake to get to it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and bring up the Betty Ross rumor. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So Betty, Betty Ross, Liv Tyler is actually reprising her role as Betty Ross in mm -hmm. Captain America 4 New World Order, which, you know, I think the leader is one of the main antagonists in that. And so, therefore, 
that is uh what is the name tim tim blake, blake nelson. nelson yeah tim blake nelson so we're getting a lot of the incredible hook cast uh <laughs> minus norton coming back and yeah i i, th- I think this is good i like Liv tyler uh totally. i think she's a great actress mm-hmm. and uh tim blake nelson i definitely love i mean not necessarily for that role because it wasn't really much of a role but man oh brother we're out there oh god <laughs> yes <laughs> Really good movie. I've seen them forever, but oh man, just I love, it in the can, boys. I love that we're getting basically the Incredible Hulk as canon to the MCU, without needing to pull Edward Norton in to replace or, yeah. or even reprise being the Hulk, because bringing Liv Tyler's Betty Ross in basically confirms that that's the same Hulk. You know, right. like I, I know there were some scenes in there, like Robert Downey Jr. appears at the end of the movie, that kind of thing. Uh, Thunderbolt Ross is, you know, obviously in it and then in the MCU. But um, I think making his Betty Ross canon to the MCU just finally uh, secures that that's a right. recast and not an, an Elseworlds Hulk. Right. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And, I, and, I, and I'm glad that, to be honest with you, I enjoyed that movie. I, I, lo- I liked The Incredible Hulk. I thought it was great. And if it wasn't yeah. for Martin being kind of, you know, a douche, you know, on, on wanting to control the whole movie. I mean, unfortunately, that's what happened. It didn't work out with him. But, I mean, I, I enjoyed that whole movie, his banner and everything, too. Agreed. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot, too. And uh, with, the, with the leader and Betty being in New World Order, uh, what are the odds of uh, Mark Ruffalo coming into this, possibly? It might, we might get a cameo or, you know, a little, a little prize in – you know, a little short prize of himself. Pretty good. I think we're going to get that payoff for Scar, Son of Hulk, at some point, and not just as a, ca- a weird little cameo in She Hulk. Even um, though nothing like Scar should look. Well, in his first appearance, but look at all of Thanos. the Marvel characters. Look at Thanos. Like, yeah, look. I mean, it's really funny to judge every first appearance. Like, oh, it didn't look like he's supposed to live in the comics yet. True. Like, let well, the character evolve. He literally just came to Earth. Like, he sure. doesn't even know who Conan the Barbarian is yet. But I do, I do think there is some kind of weight to hold to Marvel on that. On Like, you know, with the Thanos and different characters in the beginning, they were still new, and they were still really t- touch, uh, testing the waters and trying this stuff out. Man, we've got 20 years in us now. I mean, there, there's mm-hmm. really, or not 20, uh, 13, is it? Uh, no. Yeah, we're at 13. Yeah. Yeah, because so, so it was right. 10 years when uh, Endgame came out. 2008 nope. is when uh, Iron Man and the Hulk came out, I believe. Okay. So 15, no, 15 years? 15. 15? Yeah. Yeah, it's 15. But anyways, like, they should have their shit down pat now where they shouldn't have to. I'm rolling my eyes at Ben. Oh. <laughs> Look. That's simple score to you. <laughs> yeah. No, the, uh, that, that, w- no, that shit was so trash, LMFAO. Oh, I she get won't. it, Ben. <laughs> you were unhappy with that one appearance. It's okay. You know, let it go, man. Um, Marvel is going to rally. Like, um, you're looking at it as like phase four was just not what I was wanting. Great. Yeah. Um, huh? It was pre time. Oh, Burton. Oh. <laughs> Bruton. <coughs> um, but uh, phase four, I-, I get that there were some hiccups there. They were trying to redirect uh, what was functionally, you know, like 12 years of cinema and, and open the world up to telling yeah. broader stories. Some of that had to be changed. Some of it's going to be different and they're going to try some stuff like I get it. She Hulk okay. wasn't for you. Fine. It was for some people. I loved it. Um, Katrina loved it. Uh, when Brittany was on the show, Brittany loved it. Like, I get it. Like, it's not your show. Okay. Not every comic is for you either. You know? Yeah. I don't read every comic that comes out. I don't like Avengers, like the Avengers movies, but I don't read Avengers comic. They're boring. I don't read Justice League. I love Batman, but Justice League comics are boring. I don't want to slog through 18 characters from I, I and uh, there's a, there's a whole bunch of people that loved it. It has a really high Rotten Tomato score too. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but see, see, Katrina liked it. Yeah, but anyway, I, I'll get off of my uh, my soapbox. Oh, wow. But I'm just saying, like, I get it. You know, you're you're not happy. Just hang tight, man. Yeah. There's gonna be there's good stuff coming down the pipeline that you'll, will you'll fit find your that you really like. 
Yeah, it'll fit your nice little superhero shaped design you've got drawn on your wall that everything has to look like, and and uh, you'll be <laughs> you'll be you know less less complaining, I guess. A perfectionist. All right, on to the next thing. Uh, Disney let go another person, Ike Perlmutter, as the Marvel chairman, which is going to Fuck cut you know back me. on spending. This guy is by cutting him back is they are saving five point five billion dollars. We can't get better CGI to Disney Plus shows now. So uh, <laughs> when you are talking Marvel, and it's funny they said Marvel Entertainment because what Ike Perlmutter is over is actually Marvel Comics. But no, he's so, Marvel Entertainment Chairman. Right, but Marvel Studios and Marvel Entertainment are two separate things. So Marvel Studios is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Marvel Entertainment was everything else. Okay. But what Ike Perlmutter was the worst over was the comics. He's the the reason for a lot of the really terrible editorial choices in Marvel Comics over the last couple of decades. He's the reason the Fantastic Four was taken out of Marvel Comics. He's the reason that they killed off all of the X-Men. He hmm. didn't want them to sell anything in the comics that made money on screen because he didn't like that Fox and Sony and uh, uh, Universal were getting money off of Marvel properties. So he just wiped them out of the comics lines. So for a long time, we didn't have these characters in Marvel Comics, and it's because of Ike Perlmutter. Well, he also did have something to do with the MCU because, get this, in Phase 2, as Phase 2 was starting, he's the one that was trying to push to get Kevin Feige fired. Really? <laughs> but it didn't go through. But he's the one that initiated trying to get Kevin Feige fired to begin Phase 2 because he didn't think that it was taken off like it needed to do properly. <laughs> yes, and then <laughs> Disney... <laughs> So he had some oversight on Marvel Studios, and then Disney separated the two businesses and took all of his control of Marvel Studios away and gave it to Kevin Feige, um, which was a great move. And him being fired from Marvel has been a long, long time coming. And Ben, yeah, my childhood has come to life. I, <laughs> there's some things I'm not a fan of, for sure, in Marvel. There are definitely some things I'm not a fan of. Um, That's fair. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's my childhood come to life. And also, like, I have slogged through so much shit reading comics and watching cartoons and old superhero movies that are just garbage and just loving pieces of them that it's so much better now. And I just, I'd hate that there's this, like, total need to hate everything that isn't exactly what phase three of the Marvel Universe was that, like, we just need to trash the whole thing and, like, get rid of it because you just can't try new things. And and that, like, troll mentality is what's going to keep us from getting new things on screen, and we're going to end up with the same regurgitated shit that we have from every other cinema facet in the world, and it's going to ruin the fact that we've had 10 years of continuous movie uh, and, and plot and story between the series and the movies where they've been willing to take some chances and try some new things. And if every single time they step outside of that box, every fan gets to the internet and goes like, this isn't my superheroes. Like eventually they're going to like cave, you know? Yeah. I mean like WandaVision, that's a big step outside the box, but that one worked. I, I love WandaVision. I thought it was great. And that was definitely nothing like anything in the MCU. Yeah. But uh, so next on the list, Cameron, we, we keep, I, I apologize, Cameron. We keep cutting you off, and I feel like you had something to say there. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, right now I'm just in agreement. I no, I was just letting you. I'm just watching the show as like you get on your soapbox again there for like another half hour. <laughs> 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 Which, no, I, I don't mind at all. No, no. I mean, you guys are absolutely right. I mean, they're going to try and experiment and try different things. I mean, <laughs> some, some things will work. Some things won't. I mean, Love and Thunder wasn't as, as great as it should have been. Gore. Some people didn't like She-Hulk. I mean, so what? I, I can forgive them for everything except for, like Ben said, Thor, Love and Thunder. That's going to be a hard right. one for me to get past. But, but your problem with Love and Thunder, Blake, is that the humor was too funny for you. Or was too out of... That, that, that's one of the main things. It was things. too attempting, right? It was, yeah, with that, and then you got Gore, who didn't but, get to see okay. Butcher any gods. Ben and I mean, his problem is that Gore sucks. So Gore in Love and Thunder is not Gore. He sucks. And I think no, Ben I, did have a problem with the humor. But for me, being a fan of like some of the better Thor runs where the humor is like really deep, like it's all over the place. Thor's a like bumbling idiot most of the time in his comics. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, no. But my problem with Love and Thunder was definitely like the tone, like like the tones that they were trying to like meld together, like. It, it, they were trying to make it funny and serious at the same time. They didn't find the balance. It, it just right. I don't mind. I didn't mind the humor. Just maybe not too much. And like, like, yes, kill a few more gods. Yeah. Having uh, like the 
that that city is too impossible to say right now. Go, have uh, Libya? Killed a bunch of them. Yeah. 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 Well, that would have been the perfect opportunity to kill a bunch of gods in one scene and save you some money and not have to have a bunch of different planets or worlds or realms where he's killing different gods. Well, you could have done it all right there. Let him bust up in right, Olympia, right. slaughter <laughs> some gods, give us what we needed, and you don't have to do multiple scenes. <laughs> Nick is back. Nick, Nick is back. Anyway. Wow, long time <laughs> no see. <laughs> Which he was trying to do with the wish for, his for eternity. <laughs> But still, yeah, no, you're right. You're right there, Blake. And also, uh, but yeah, yeah, it just, but no. Yeah, I, Gore, just... Gore, Gore went in what he should have been, but I don't think Gore was awful. I think they should have just given more of his character and more evolution and more more of his character. So I, I, I think Christian Bale's a good actor. Right, right. I, I like that as well. I mean, I did like I liked Christian Bale's score for sure, and uh, he I thought he did a pretty great job with it. To be honest, uh, one of the better parts of Love and Thunder, in my opinion. But still, like they definitely could have like explored and like dug dug deep into his character for sure. And but no, I didn't have a problem. The, the villains from Phase Four for the like were definitely some of the high points for sure. So Love and Thunder, I don't love everything about it. Uh, the humor. Sometimes it fell flat. Absolutely. There is some balance issues in that movie. Mm -hmm. um, but the Guardian scenes, awesome. Yes. Um, yeah. Some of the stuff with the humor was so trash too. Anytime something happened that mattered 10 seconds later, they just covered it with a bad joke. Example, Korg dying. Yes. Um, <laughs> that, that, Korg, that Korg being functionally useless in this movie really upset me. I love Korg. Um, well, remember, uh, it's Taika who directed the, the movie and it's Korg. So we just found a funny way to keep him alive. Himself yeah. alive, and and for for Taylor Burton, who's not in the comments tonight's sake, no Beta Ray Bill again. I'm so tired of Thor movies with no Beta Ray Bill, and um, so I didn't hate the stuff with Stormbringer, uh, or Stormbreaker. Is it Breaker or Bringer? Breaker, Stormbreaker. Breaker. Yeah, Stormbreaker. And and Molnair. I thought that humor was funny because they're both sentient in the comics, mm -hmm. so I thought that was funny. Uh, I didn't hate it. I know Blake had a big problem with uh, like ex girlfriend kind of jokes with Stormbreaker and and Molnair. I didn't like that. Yeah, but I thought hey, it was funny. Hey, you, what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. I thought that shit was hilarious. Um, yeah, that, that and part. Uh, so some of it, and and the fact that I really thought going into it that they were going to make a big joke out of Thor, and uh, and for the most part they didn't. He was very respected by everyone, other than perhaps. Uh, um, Valkyrie um, for the movie as a warrior and, and his ability to fight and all of that kind of stuff. So I just think that uh, the progression of Thor from the unworthy Thor we got in Thor one to, you know, and, and you got to remember uh, one out of four Thor movies are good. Yes. Yeah. Ragnarok. Cause Thor's not good. <laughs> Thor's boring. Dark world's not good. And then Love and Thunder's not good. So I mean, everybody's you know these Ragnarok are Ragnarok all... was the perfect and, and Ragnarok's, Ragnarok's great. Of all. Ragnarok was the best. I would say I liked Thor better than The Dark World. Oh, Thor Love one was better than Dark World. Oh wait, what? Or or the first Thor? Yeah, better than Dark World. Well, I think that Dark World is definitely the redheaded stepchild prior to Love and Thunder coming out. Yeah, but uh, also whenever Love and Thunder did come out. I, re I heard and read a lot of fans were like uh, going back and say, like, why did I hate Dark World so much? This is much worse. I'd like some yeah. fans were like some fans no, were like features. like Dark World was better. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I just I get it. I I totally understand having complaints about some of the Marvel properties. Uh -huh. What I don't get is just saying it all is awful because you have some things you don't like. Because every time there's something you don't like, somebody likes it. Like, it's just, I hate this all or nothing perspective on these movies. It's, um, you know, and, and then you have these same people who are like, uh, you know, give us more of the Snyderverse, you know, the that the DCU isn't that bad. And it's like, yeah, Blake, exactly, your face. Uh, I would take Love and Thunder over almost every DCEU film to date. Hey. This is true. This damn. is true, actually. I gotta <laughs> agree with you on that. Damn, damn. And I, I'm, but and I'm not over Shazam fans. too. Shazam too. I'd take over Thor: Love and Thunder. Yes, yes. yes. One, <laughs> one electric god over another. Yes. I gotta sure. still take you to go see that. 
Yeah, you haven't. Uh, you stood me up many days in a row. We haven't made a date yet. So. Yeah. You better. <laughs> oh, next on the list, uh, Johnson Majors. Hot topic this week. Uh, right off the bat, we get a woman who calls uh, uh, calls in and sits there and says that he uh, strangled her and assaulted her and all these things. And then immediately, within, what, 24 hours, I think? Uh, it was really quick. <laughs> there was uh, footage, witnesses, taxi cab driver, everything to disprove it. And then come to find out, she actually admitted that she was having a mental crisis, and that's why she called in and did this. Well, he and, called. Uh, oh, yeah, he called. He called. Actually, there was the record called. that he called 911. Yeah. Yeah, prior he's to that even happening. The cops. <laughs> no, he's, he called it prior to that happening. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah, so he's been free and clear. But, man, there's still people running it around. People asking to recast him. The yeah. U.S. Army, I think, had a. Uh, they had a commercial. They had a commercial, like they had him, commercial. Like, yeah, and they and dropped they it. it. Just mm-hmm. because yeah. they're like, ah, even after he's cleared, they don't care. They're going to leave it drop. People like, are like, so cancel culture scared man, that like, they ran insane. the other like, way with this. Like, it's like, insane. It, so. Mud on your, like, your name is Mud, like that, that slogan. Yeah. Just like anytime, one, one time, like you slip. Even after you're cleared, people will be like, uh, no, I'm going to go this way. And yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's stupid. I mean, but granted, I do understand like being cautious. But if they're clear and free and like, yeah, no other reason, then well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like, like OK, Ben just said 24 hours later, she was a multimillionaire. I sure. would kind of go with that. I would kind of <laughs> go with that if there wasn't already on record him calling 911 prior to her making this accusation. So I, I truly believe that this is true. I think I think it's a legit story, uh, you know, with, with what she's going through and, and and all this other stuff. Because you know, if there was no record of him pro- calling prior to that happening before she made this accusation and stuff, and then her getting in the hospital, then I'd be like, okay, they just paid her off to cover that up really quick. But I, I don't know, man. I, but yeah. also, I, I'm I hope this doesn't affect his future. I, th- I think. We don't, don't need another person for it King. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't see it happening. I mean, look at Ezra Miller. I mean, look what everything that <laughs> they've done. Yeah, and... yeah, well, look, yeah. Well, look at the the company that DC Studios like reports. Yeah, to. good point. Mm-hmm. So I, I, and and the the funny thing is, this week it's it's hot news, and the twenty four hours news cycle is going to keep regurgitating it. But we'll move on to something else pretty quickly. And I think that this has already been very well proven to not be the case. Right. And she's already dropped the charges, and it's already not a thing. So yeah. I don't think it's going to affect going forward with King the Conqueror. I don't think it's yeah. going to affect the DCEU. Um, so I, I honestly think this is already done. It was done before the news even got out. And give it a week, and we won't be talking about it at all. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, re- I'm ready to quit seeing it on my social feeds. Yeah. It, it, I'm getting sick of it already. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, Mike Tyson, like, murdered someone and uh and and forced himself on a woman and now he's a beloved social and polit or social and uh um public figure so like you know that's pretty bad jonathan majors isn't even being convicted of this crime give it some time <laughs> but uh next on the list we finally get our secret invasion release date disney plus has it also going to be like tyson's ass anyway <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. I need <laughs> oh, to I got a photo. I don't have any meme to see you later, Cameron, that we did this is on the show today. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, Secret Invasion, June 21st. We finally get that date. That's been pushing back. We've been getting, trying to remember, figure out when it's going to come out. But we have got a solid date of June 21st. The first uh, that, Marvel that actually, series. Do I? The first Marvel series for 2023. And it's a yeah. yeah, it is actually. Uh, is it? Yeah, I guess it is. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So... Man, that's halfway through the year. We're already getting our first one. Was she oh. this year or is that last year? Shulk was last year. Yeah. Man, time flies. Wow. Yeah. Well, Kevin Feige, he said he wanted to like spread out like the the the, tele- the series for yeah. Disney Plus, like make them as what uh, as feel worthy as like special as like the movies are. Yes. Yes. And and I'm glad. I'm because I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, if I get, I don't expect as much out of the Disney Plus series shows as we do our movies. But at the same time, I would love to see the the same good quality stuff be brought into these stories and this acting. I'm not expecting the big CGI and, and all, all this stuff, but but make us feel it. Make us feel inside of us like what the movies make us feel. Yeah, put it inside <laughs> us. Let, let let Marvel slide it in and feel it. You know, let it let it feel us. <laughs> it, 
So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and, you know the, the Disney Plus series is like a Marvel quickie. The movie is like the full blown show. I want, but you know, I want that same pleasure. So, I think it's good that they're going to slow the road, put some more time, and focus on quality. That was gorgeous, Blake. That was yeah, so well yeah, done. <laughs> glad you glad you stopped yourself before you can play the whole butt thing. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for finish. Thanks for stopping before your climax. I didn't want to have to clean yeah. that up. Yeah, please don't don't clean up his mess, Danny. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, no, I. I'm sad that we're not getting uh, like a lot, like uh, <laughs> much before, but well, I know. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're sorry, Seth. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely. I'm sad that we're not getting as much new shows, but it probably is for the better to like slow slow it down, like make it feel like we want to watch it, and it's gonna be uh, if make not you feel like what. <laughs> 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 No wonder the De- no wonder Deontay's friends with you guys. Welcome to <laughs> publicly and Clyde. We uh, we, this oh this gosh. is what we do. Uh, so, but anyways, at best we might get like one or two more series for sure. Loki season mm-hmm. two and, and possibly uh, what if season two by the end of the year. It may be another. Uh, I just can't imagine which shows. Yep. I and mean, I mean, honestly, I mean, we will get what five or six Marvel products out this year still. I, yeah. Done. Yeah, I mean, still, yeah, yeah. I remember when we were getting two to three movies a year. So, I mean, I still can't complain. No. Yeah. Used to be four, but now, now they backtracked to the three. Uh, mm. But yeah. And quality uh, over quantity. Yeah. That's the and point. that's why Marvel does like it does and DC doesn't. So, well, you know, <laughs> it's weird because DC trying. just avoids both.